Howdy ho there friends and neighbors, Bobby here today. Hey folks, today we're going to be doing a front brake job on a Kia Sedona 2009 model. Uh, we're going to put new pads and new rotors on this vehicle. So let's get started here, okay? First of all, right here on the left front, we've got our air ratchet with a 14 millimeter socket. We're going to remove both of these caliper bolts on this side. So here we go. All right, now we can just take our caliper. We're just gonna lay it up top here, out of the way temporarily. There's two bolts inside here with 17 millimeter heads on that actually hold the uh, caliper bracket in place. Let me go ahead and break the bolts loose with a long wrench to start with. Okay, there we go. And now we have our air ratchet with our 17 millimeter impact 38 swivel and we'll go ahead and remove both of these. Okay. Now with the bolts removed you can go ahead and remove your caliper bracket and it has both of your pads in it, your old pads. Let's go ahead and slide these pads out of the way and remember the back pad has your squealer on it and we'll match it up with the new pads here in a little bit. I'll show you that later. Let's go ahead and take both of them out and then we'll take a, a wire brush right here and I'll just put this right here on my leg and we're gonna clean the brake dust off of these little shims here, okay? Just kind of wire brush some of that old cruddy dust off of there, flip it up. Let's do this side as well. And we'll get all that out of there. Now, another thing you wanna do with the caliper bracket is we want to um, um, lube these pins here, okay? So, let's go ahead and pop the little boots off here. And let's pull a pin out and we're gonna wipe it clean. And then we're going to uh, take some of this 3M silicone paste here. And uh, you can use like a white lithium or something like that to do, to do this as well. But a lot of the Asian cars and stuff, they actually use a silicone base uh, lubricant from the factory. So we're gonna go back with that. Put your pen back in and kind of twist it as you uh, put it back in to kind of spread that lubricant around. Let's do this side here the same way. Let me wipe it off. And I'm going to go ahead and lube it up too with the paste. Just like so. And that's about all you really need to do to the caliper bro. Okay folks, time to take the rotor off now. Let's go ahead and lay our caliper down here and we're just going to rest it right here on the uh, tie rod end. Some vehicles you may not have a good place to rest it. If you don't, um, hang it up. You know, get you a coat hanger or something tied up here to a spring because you don't want to let it hang and stretch out the brake line. Okay? So let's take our uh, rotor off and to do that we have two locking screws on here that we need to knock loose. Now what we have here is an impact driver with a number three Phillips head bit. So let's go ahead and stick that in place and we will take our hammer and smack that and it automatically breaks that screw loose. Same thing right here and let's go ahead and pull these out. Okay. And now we can remove our rotor. Okay friends, hey, we got our new rotors laying up here on the workbench. I wanna show you one thing you might wanna check right quick, just make sure you have the right rotors. So we got one of our old ones here. Set them side by side. Make sure this is pretty much flush here. Hold them up to one another. Make sure they're the same in diameter and also flip them upside down. Make sure this is pretty flush here. Make sure it's got the same offset. So these look like the correct rotors. So we can get rid of this one. All right, now, let's take, uh, your rotors will always come with a little bit of lubricant sprayed on them from the factory uh, to keep it from rusting while they're waiting to be sold to a customer. So we're gonna take some brake cleaner on a paper towel and let's go ahead and just wipe these down really good. You can wash them in soap and water if you like. But uh, today we're just gonna wipe these down with brake cleaner real good. Now when I machine rotors, I definitely wash them with a uh, soap and water because the water hitting it actually helps to demagnetize the rotor. But these are 
going to be okay just by doing this and we'll get a little bit more brake clean and we'll go ahead and wipe down okay, the next friends, one. The pads that we're using today are a Napa brand. They're called Adaptive Ones. These are about the best brake pads on the market. I really like these pads. They're nice and quiet. They have good stopping capability. They're just really nice brake pads. Okay, now you'll see you'll get a little tube of molly grease in here and I'll show you where to put that on a couple important places. Now your brake pads here with these adaptive ones, it shows you they got a blue and a red dot on them, blue dot. That means that it is an outer pad and red dot means it's an inner pad. And same thing, red dot, blue dot. So we'll show you how to get those put in the right spot when we get ready okay, to Okay, going back on. together with this thing. Let's go ahead and put our new rubber in place. Make sure you line your holes up with the screws in the hub. And we'll take our screws here with a number three Phillips head bit. And we will screw our rotor back down. All right, so we are going to tighten these babies up. And friends, I'm not gonna tighten them back up with the impact driver. I'm just gonna tighten them as tight as I can get them with the number three screwdriver. And that'll make it a little easier for the next guy taking them off. Okay, we're getting ready to put the caliper bracket on and we'll use our Molly grease here and we'll squeeze out just a little bit on our finger. And what we're gonna do, these little spring clips here, we're gonna put the, a very, very thin coat of that on here, okay? Don't gob it up, because this stuff might end up on your brake pad. That's not good. Just a little bit of lubricant. Don't take very much. Now just keep those uh, pads sliding nice and easily in these uh, little slots here, okay? All right, from that point, we will go ahead and grab our two caliper bolts here, okay? I'm gonna slide this into place and I'm gonna start these by hand, okay? So let's go ahead and get them started. And then we will now tighten, tighten them up. up with our air ratchet, 17 millimeter swivel socket. Now with it zipped down with the air ratchet, we'll just take our 17 millimeter box and wrench and we'll just add a little extra torque there. No need to go crazy. You can use a torque wrench if you like with the, uh, and you can look up the proper spec, but I've been doing brakes long enough. I know about what this should feel like. So, and we're just about there. So there we go with the caliper okay, brakes. Now we're getting ready to install the brake pads. Like I was telling you, there's a red dot on the inner pad. There's a blue dot on the outer pad on this particular type of pads. Now there's a left and a right you want to get your uh, squealer on the correct side. There's the, the pad for the other side actually has a squealer on this side. So we got the right side. We're going to go ahead and install this brake pad, okay? So it is installed now. And here's our outer pad. And we're going to go ahead and stick it in place. Just like that. Now, from this point here, we're going to use a little bit of anti-seize, okay? or they make lubricants that you can put on the uh, outsides of your pads. I like to use anti-seize because it seems to stay, it don't get hot and run off because we definitely don't want anything that would get hot and run off onto the braking surface. So I will just put a thin coat of anti-seize across this shim on the outer pad, just a thin coat, and also in here on the inner pad, okay? I'll just smear a, a thin coat of anti-seize and now we're about ready to squeeze back Okay, the we're going to go ahead and squeeze the pistons back on the calipers, on the caliper I say. Um, we'll take an old brake pad and we will take a big pair of channel locks. You can also use a uh, C-clamp or they make little tools for pressing back calipers but I've used a big pair of channel locks most of my career and this seems to work pretty good. Okay, so put an old brake pad there and we will squeeze until we get the pistons pushed all the way back. Okay, with the pistons squeezed all the way back, it's time to put the caliper onto the uh, brake assembly here, okay? Make sure your brake line is not twisted. Make sure you didn't accidentally get things twisted around because uh, that will definitely cause a problem with 
the brake line. Okay, go ahead and slide it into place. You may have to push your pins in just a little bit to get your caliper to seat properly. And we are there. Go ahead and take your caliper bolts and we will go ahead and start them by hand. And we will tighten them down with our 14 millimeter socket on our 3 8 air ratchet. Okay, calipers tightened down. We'll take our 14 millimeter box in wrench and we will check the torque on this. Okay, friends, we're actually done with half of the brake job, okay? We've got the left side done. All we have to do now is go on the right side and do the same maneuvers and we'll be done with the brake job. Now, a couple other things that you'll make sure you want to do is uh, make sure you get your wheels put back on, torque the lug nuts down to the proper specification, um, lower the car back down, check your pump your pedal up, okay? Make sure you pump your pedal up before you put it in gear and take off or you'll end up running into something because you definitely have to pump that pedal up to get the pads up against the rotors again, okay? Very important. And, uh, and after you do that, top off your brake fluid level, take it for a nice little test drive, do some easy light braking to kind of break your pads in, and then you should be set to go. Thank you for watching the video today. Don't forget to subscribe and tell a friend about us. Have a great day.